Hello scientific people, today we are going to discuss about the story of Archimedes and the Archimedes principle. So long back there was a king and his name was Hero and he was the king of Syre, Syracuse uh, and it's a place in Greece and the king was actually very fond of uh, wearing golden crowns and that too made up of pure gold. So one day he called a goldsmith and goldsmith was given some amount of gold and then he was asked to make a very good crown out of that. Some days after the goldsmith returned with a, returned with a very nice crown and uh, he handed it over to the king. But the king had some doubts in his mind. He thought that the goldsmith might have taken some amount of gold and he might have added something else. Now he was in a dilemma and of course he was not a science guy so he didn't have any solution for this for this particular problem so he called one of his uh, one of the famous mathematician and physicist of that time and he was of course the archimedes and archimedes was given some time that you you are supposed to find out whether this this particular uh, crown is made up of pure gold or not but the condition is you cannot scratch it you cannot break it now archimedes was definitely a science guy but he was in there also under uh, confusion that what shall i do in order to uh, get to my answer and <clears throat> anyhow in the olden days what used to happen was the kings were very the the if you don't follow the king's order they will cut off your heads so archimedes was in a dilemma what to do many days passed and he was about to meet his deadline one fine day while he was going to take bath in a bathtub when he went inside the bathtub he found that some of the water that was of course equal to the volume of his submerged body uh, that went out so he got some idea from here and he started shouting eureka 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 and he start he started running on the street naked and he directly went to the king eureka means discovery in in greek language and he ran through the streets naked without any kind of clothes and finally he went to the king and the king said that okay i can understand your your passion and you must actually go home and get dressed and come back again so here was archimedes again in front of the king and he said that before i show you uh, what is my answer i need a beam balance so the king gave him a beam balance so here it is he asked for some pure gold he was given that this was the crown of the king and we are supposed to see what is inside this crown right whether it's a pure gold or not that archimedes has to figure it out archimedes asked for a big container with some water of course we may actually change the story by a bit and suppose the initial level of water till here in this container is v1 and say for example v1 ml or we can also write down v1 centimeter cube because 1 ml is equal to 1 centimeter cube now what did he do was he actually he immersed this pure piece of gold inside and then due to that he found that the water level rose till here the final volume was v2 so the difference in volume that is v2 minus v1 this is the volume of the gold piece pure gold piece now he kept this gold piece on the beam balance and he also found the mass that was say for example m grams this was in centimeter cube so in this way he was able to find out the density right of the pure gold this symbol is rho r h o the symbol for density that is v2 that is m mass upon volume so the mass is m upon v2 minus v1 so he was able to figure out the volume of pure gold now what did he do he immersed this crown inside the water 
so again water level went up and in this way he was able to find the difference in the volume the water level went up and the difference in the water level itself is the volume of the crown so in this way he was able to find out the volume of the crown he kept this beam balance sorry he kept this crown on the beam balance and there it was he was able to find out the mass of the crown also and in this way he found that the density of crown that is the mass upon volume was less than the volume of the sorry less than the density of the pure gold and had it been this crown made up of pure gold then its density must be equal to the density of the pure gold and which was not in this particular case that means this crown is not made up of pure gold in this way the goldsmith was being caught and finally the punishment was ready for the goldsmith right okay so here i am ending up my story and let's move on with the physics part of the archimedes principle so archimedes principle states that when a board when a body or an object is partially or completely submerged in a fluid there there is a upward direction force which is called buoyant force which acts on it which is equal to the loss of weight of the object or it is also equal to the weight of the fluid displaced right so let's understand this with the help of this small uh, diagram so here what we are being shown we have we have a spring balance so this is a spring balance spring balance measures weight not the mass right and the si unit of weight is newton so over here when you are measuring suppose this is a stone this is a stone and this stone its weight i am measuring in the air and the weight of the stone is 4 newton so the weight of the stone in air is how much 4 newtons now the whole stone this is actually a eureka can you can understand that i cannot fill the water above this one because it is going to overflow now what am i going to do is i am going to keep an empty container and i am going to put it over a digital beam balance right and this digital beam balance shows the reading zero even after we put the container so actually i am subtracting the um, containers mass and so whatever volume of water that flows out over here so i would be able to measure the mass of that particular liquid only right so it would be excluded i'm ex i would be excluding the mass of this particular container so now if this stone is immersed inside like this this is the stone and i am completely immersing the stone inside the liquid so the buoyant force that is b force is going to act in the upward direction whereas the weight of the stone acts in the downward direction so now this spring balance is actually going to record the weight minus the buoyant force because the spring balance always measures the net weight and here we go so we have this as one newton so this was four newton earlier in the air minus one so that means this b has to have three newtons value right so this three newton is the buoyant force and when you immerse this stone inside the liquid the liquid is going to overflow it is going to get collected over here and you can see that the weight of this liquid is also 3 newton whereas the value of buoyant force is also 3 newton so from here we can say that the value of buoyant force is equal to the liquid which is displaced out that is also equal to the difference in the weight in air look at this weight and this weight this is 4 newton and this is 1 newton so weight in air minus the apparent weight in the liquid will give you the buoyant force that is 3 newton that is also equal to the weight of the liquid displaced this liquid which is going to flow out its weight is also going to be equal to buoyant force but the volume of this liquid will be equal to the volume of the this particular stone right that we all all know so suppose the volume of the stone is vs so this liquid which is 
collected over here its volume will always be also be vs right so again if you have not understood very shortly i am going to explain you uh, again over here so what do you, what do we have is we have a solid stone suppose its volume is vs and its weight in the air is suppose 150 newton this is spring balance weight in air is 150 newton the moment i completely immerse this inside the liquid suppose the liquid is filled till here i'm sorry till here now this is completely immersed inside the liquid so the liquid is going to get collected over here this liquid will also have volume vs but due to the buoyant force in the upward direction b we can see that the weight of this this particular stone in the water has reduced. So the weight over here is suppose W or weight in water. This weight in water is 100 Newton. So 150 Newton was the force in the downward direction 150 Newton. Right. And that means the buoyant force should be 50 Newtons in the upward direction. That is why the net new weight that is this one is 100 newtons so spring balance always measures the resultant weight and you can see that the resultant weight has decreased inside the water due to the upward buoyant force which is equal to 50 newton and this liquid which is collected over here or the water which is collected over here its weight weight of the water displaced out weight of the water displaced is again found to be 50 newtons so weight in air minus weight in water is equal to buoyant force that is also equal to weight of water displaced out that is this one 50 newton right weight in air minus the weight in water this part is also called the loss of of weight so loss of weight that is this minus this that is equal to buoyant force that is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced right guys so this one is the um, what do you call the Archimedes principle and see if you want to find out the formula for buoyant force buoyant force B that is equal to weight of the water displaced so that is equal to weight of the water displaced weight of the water displaced is equal to mass of water displaced multiplied by acceleration due to gravity now mass of this water is equal to volume of this water multiplied by the density of the water right multiplied by g so here we are with the formula of buoyant force why why i have written vs because the volume of the stone itself is the volume of the water displaced See, I am interested in finding the weight of this part because this weight is the buoyant force. So, this weight is equal to the mass of this liquid that is equal to volume into density into G. So, this is the formula for buoyant force. So, buoyant force actually depends upon how much volume of the substance is submerged. So, if the uh, complete substance is submerged inside the liquid, then the buoyant force will be maximum. And if very little part of the body is submerged inside, then the buoyant force will be minimum. So the buoyant force acting on the body depends upon how much volume of the substance is immersed inside as well as it also depends upon the density of the liquid. G we consider it as constant and more denser the liquid, more would be the buoyant force. Of course, buoyant force is a force, its, an S, it's SI unit would be Newton and it is a vector quantity because it is a force. Right guys, so hopefully you have enjoyed the explanation, do subscribe to my channel if you have not done so and under any uh, confusion, if you have any doubts, do ask me in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video guys.